Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to, welcome to How to Pass NCLEX Monday Motivation. I am so happy to be with you. My name is Regina MSN RN, the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet. And I have an amazing journey that I am ready to take. I'm ready to take this journey with you and it's passing the NCLEX. It's passing the NCLEX. It's actually your journey, but I'm happy to be a part of it. And the challenges that you will face, the struggles that you will overcome is going to be so worth it when you get the reward of getting your nursing license, I promise you. And I know I could tell you that over and over again, but it is so much better. It is so much better when your um, your journeyman your colleague, your peer is able to tell you that themselves, okay? That themselves. And so I have one such person. I have one such person that I'm just jumping out of my seat to talk to. You guys know I wasn't feeling my very best. Um, but this, when I when I logged on and I saw her face, it was like, okay, let's go. Let's get ready to go. So I'm going to bring her on. This is Jen. Say hi, everybody, to Jen. Hi. <laughs> Hello, all, um, almost Remar nurses. I like that. Almost Remar <laughs> nurses. Hey, Jan, what's going on? Well, um, I graduated from my nursing program in 2018. So it's been a long journey to pass this NCLEX. This was my eighth attempt. I took it Friday, February 23rd using the V2. Mm -hmm. And I got my email Monday morning that I passed my RN exam. So I'm now a Remar nurse. I am an RN. <laughs> Oh my goodness. A long time coming a long for you. Time. A lot of struggles, a lot of um, just defeat feeling yeah. and just sometimes it just felt like, why am I even doing this? Should I even do it again? Should I just keep going? And I remembered one of my attempts multiple years ago, um, I had your DVD program. Mm -hmm. And that was the closest I ever came to passing it. And I'm like, all right, let's see what Remar's got going on lately. And I looked it up. I saw the V2 and like, it's already ready to go for next gen. Let's do this. And I'm like, well, let's do this. And I did the program. I was here at work, uh, working at a doctor's office. So all day long, I'm doing my program. I got to finish the program and I'm like, all right, let's answer some questions. And I kept, oh, well, I didn't do good in that section. Let me go back to that class. And let me re-list into that class. And then I just kept re-watching the, sh the, the shows and just kept doing the questions. And it finally happened. So um, talk to me about if, okay, so there's a lot of people watching and mm -hmm. they are in maybe where you were, where they kept, they keep testing. They're trying really hard. It's not that they're not trying hard. They're studying really hard, but they're yeah. not getting the results that they want. What are they doing wrong? Uh, honestly, it's um, just answering the questions, I feel like, just getting in there and because I've always, you know, I was military, so it's you train how you fight. So if your test is questions, answer questions. And before I would focus on, you know, just listening to the program and listening to the lectures and then going in and taking my test without practicing anything. Mm -hmm. and gotcha. getting there, your question bank was amazing because even a quick little 15 question quiz, I had a case study in there. And it's just that way you have it set up, it thoroughly prepared me for going in and answering questions on the NCLEX. Matt, Jen, I know you probably spent a lot of money a over lot. the years. A lot, yeah. right? <laughs> I've done every review program out there. U World, Kaplan, Hearst, ATI, the NCSBN program. I've done them all. Yeah. What made you decide to keep investing? Because some people might say, you know what? It's really not worth it. It's really not worth all the money. What made you keep wanting to reinvest into this process? The fact that I didn't graduate nursing school to just give up. Nursing school is hard enough on its own. Your blood, sweat, and tears go into passing and getting that degree and... I'm stubborn too. So for me, I'm just stubborn. I'm like, I'm not giving up. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'm, it's the thing. I didn't spend all that time in school and learning this and wanting to help people and heal patients and be there for them to just give up. 
Got it. Got it. Even though so, my husband's back there, like, are you sure you want to do it again? He's like, I don't know if I can take you after the test when you don't pass it. And I'm like, no, I got to keep going. Eventually I'll get it. Yeah. Eventually I'll find the program that helps me get it. That's the thing. So all in all, how would, how long did you say you studied for this last attempt that you did? I think I got your program in October. Okay. Um, I work full time. Um, so I was doing it. I was listening to the lectures here at work, going home and doing it. I just took my time, you know, yeah. learn section, listen to the lectures multiple times. If you have to, if it's just not clicking, don't go past it to the next section. Make sure you have it before you go to the next one. Yes. Did you? Did, did I lose her audio? Okay. I think we lost you. Did we lose our, I think we lost your audio. Yeah, we lost. Uh, there's wait. There she is. I think there's no. Is there sound? Hold on, Jen. There's. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear Jen? Just put it in the comments. We had you. It was going so good. See, that's how the enemy works. We were. We were loving it. Come on. Okay. Um. Okay, Jen. Can you speak now? Can't, you can't. Is it me? Hold on. Let me make sure I'm on. So we hear you. Okay. They said we can only we can they can only hear Remar. Okay. No Jen. Okay. Okay. Jen, drop off and come back on. Maybe it's something changed with the setting. Okay. Um. So while we wait for Jen to come back, because I do want to hear, I think it's so important uh, for us to hear somebody who decided not to give up. And after eight times, you know, you, you want to know like, Hey, how do you get the courage to do that? Okay. Jen's Did back. You get it back? Yeah. I got you back now. All right. Sorry. My daughter called in and it messed everything up. Yeah. I think that's what it was. <laughs> that's what it was. My daughter, my child. <laughs> so you were telling me that you, you know, you work full time and I was going to ask you, did you feel like you were in, did you get into the comparison game of like, Oh, so-and-so passed and I didn't pass. Did you feel any of like that type of guilt or shame? No, you went out again. Ah, I can't hear you. You know what? Sometimes if it's an, like an alarm, you can hear me. You can't. Somebody says we can hear. Ah. Man. Okay, so I don't know, Jen. We can't. I can't hear you. One more time. Drop off. Come back. Drop off and come back. Yeah. Um. So I was saying sometimes. Okay. All right. So this is Jen's. Okay. So we're doing, and that's that's the thing about it, you guys. <laughs> this is what a what a, a week. So we are going to talk about mastectomy. That is going to be our topic for this this class today. We have a lot of things that we are also going to cover. Also, if you don't know, guess what? Quick Facts is 50% off. I want every single person, I want every single person to have this book. Quick Facts for nursing school, Quick Facts for NCLEX. These are major products that are helping you get your nursing license faster. So um, let's bring Jim back on again. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Can we do it again? No. You can't hear me either. Uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, so I don't know what to say. Try it again, Jen. I'm going to try to bring you on. It's not working. All right. Uh, let's see. Try it one more time. This testimony is so good. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. Oh, can you maybe a different phone or I don't know, because it was working. So it was working fine. All right. I can. I will. I must pass nursing school. Yeah, I love that. All right. Um, also got some more testimonials. Congratulations, Jen. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I don't know what happened. I, <laughs> okay. Technology is a great, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tell me now, um, I, was, I was talking about, had, did you feel like you were in comparison um, to anybody? Did you have any guilt for not being able to pass? Like, you know, what were those emotions like for during me, this time? I was really happy with anybody that was able to pass their test. Like I felt thrilled, like you did it. Awesome job. You know, yeah. you, you did what you had to do for me. It was more internally, like to myself, like, did I not study enough? Did I not, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, put forth enough effort or yeah. were the questions just super crazy this time? And I didn't know what I was doing and yeah. Did I yeah, yeah. completely that day. And <laughs> yep. Did you find that the next gen NCLEX was easier than the previous versions you took? Yes. You, really? You really broke the inf information down so well that having in small little classes, nothing too long, because some mm -hmm. of us with ADD, we start zoning out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like yeah. Here at work or something like that. But having small classes and the way you just broke the information down, um, and you told the medications what the issue that's going on. That's a whole thought thing too. Linking the medications with the disease, not just knowing mm -hmm. the medications, but mm -hmm. linking it to what it's used for. Yep. That yep. Awesome that I noticed was really good on that you did on your part. That was amazing. What other study tips would you give to somebody that was studying as well? Um. If you're taking the V2 and you're doing the lectures and you just don't understand that lecture, don't move to the next one until you understand the one you were just on. That was a thing. Um, SIADH, um, diabetes, insipidus, sometimes those would get crossed for me. Mm -hmm. I made sure that I had to really listen to those lectures over and over to, until it clicked. And then I was like, okay, right. now I can move on to the next one. Um, not necessarily diets because I've had so many things done in my life that it's like I kind of knew the diets, but herbal medications, making sure you know those G ones. Right, I had right, right. about the G medicate, the G herbal remedies. So <laughs> I made sure I went back and just studied over everything and re-listened to lectures that I was kind of, eh, I don't know if I completely understand it. Perfect. I love that. And what's, what's next for you now? What are you going to do now that you have your your R in, your R in. I know, I know. I'm so excited. Um, I applied for a couple of jobs in our system here in Toledo. Um, they had some OR jobs. That's something I'm really interested in is being in the OR. Um, but I've also applied at uh, the VA because being a vet, mm -hmm. I would love to work with vets too. So I got my foot, got my little rocks out there. Let's see who somebody picks it up. So. Uh I you're going to be an amazing nurse. I can tell by your just your personality, your your determination, your yes. ability to just, you know, just just be transparent. And also, I love what you said, like, even though you hadn't passed, you were still able to be happy for those yeah. who who had passed. And that's just that is amazing. That's really on cool. People coming on like, oh, I finally passed. I'm a Remar nurse. And I'm like, oh, that's so awesome for you. I got it this next time. I got to have it this next time, you know. It just, it honestly, it just pushed me further that if they can do it. I can do it. Like, let's, let's do it. I helped it. I help it push me into passing. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you did it. Congratulations, did. Jen. Thank you so much. You really made my morning. Um, oh yeah. And I feel tons better. I think now I'm able to continue on with the class today. So everybody thank Jen for spending time with us this morning. You'll hear from me again. Okay, Jen. Absolutely. Anytime guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay. So welcome to our class today. I'm going to try to do as much as I can. You guys know I wasn't on winning Wednesday last week. That was my first winning Wednesday. I missed in two years in two years. So shout out to uh, chaplain Mark for holding down that class for me. Shout out to the Remar nurses for supporting Mark <laughs> during the class. And we're just going to try to get through as much as we can today. Talking about, talking about mastectomies. Oh, and I also have announcements about my, my classes, my international travels that I'm about to do. You guys, it is, I, I, we'll talk about it. Philippines, 
I'm coming. All right. So mastectomy, mastectomy um, here. This is a topic from our quick facts for NCLEX. Just really quickly, when we talk about mastectomies, actually, um, I did get the notes from here. Quick facts for NCLEX. And the... I usually have the page numbers for me. I don't have the page on here. Page number. Okay. It's on page 51. When we look at the mastectomy um, topic on quick facts, it's not long at all. It's not long at all. It's literally just like um, maybe five sentences and then our priority box, our priority box. So the reason why I cover mastectomies on uh, the quick facts review is because it is one of breast cancer, of course, is one of the leading cancers that women get. And a third of women who get breast cancer will opt to get a mastectomy. And so that means that even if you are not working in oncology, you could very well be in another discipline such as surgery or geriatrics or, you know, anywhere else. And you could be taking care of a, a woman who's had a mastectomy. And so nursing in general, we see a lot of women who've had lumpectomies or mastectomies. Okay. So now let's get into it. All right. Now, um, the mastectomy is an operation. It's a surgical procedure that involves removal of the entire breast. Okay. Typically, if we talk about a mastectomy, we are removing the entire breast, the skin over the affected area, the nipple, and the areolar complex. As well as with the mastectomy, you can get into removing the underlying muscle tissue, uh, the pectoralis fascia, as well as the lymph nodes. And they would be the location is the auxiliary lymph nodes. And so as we are reading this statement, it seems very complex, but this is all anatomy. And it's very important that you understand what is to be removed during the mastectomy, all right? Because when you have muscle tissue, when you have lymph nodes, when you have skin, all right, that is removed, then that means that the recovery process and the healing process is going to be, okay, is going to be complicated, as well as the post-surgical lifestyle. And so a lot of the um, teaching around mastectomies is, of course, what, how to take care of a patient who has had one, all right? So this is indicated for breast cancer. This is something that is typically only done for breast cancer. The breast tissue in a woman serves many different purposes, okay? Um, particularly younger women, you know, we are uh, using the, the breast tissue to produce food for our babies, right? Um, it, it, it contributes to our general and our physical um, identity and how we uh, view our bodies. And so when a woman has a mastectomy, there is a lot of physical and then there's a lot of psychological needs that have to be addressed. All right. Um, again, indication for this is inflammatory breast cancer. I have this question. Um, uh, any thoughts about male breast cancer? Yes, there is an incidence of males who are developing uh, cancer in their breast tissue as well. I think that the research is ongoing I can't say too much about uh, the causes of it, but it is a thing. It is a thing. And then until we see more information on it, I don't feel like you have to get too involved into the, the genetics of it. Okay. Is uh, breast cancer, is breast lumpectomy the same as mastectomy? What do we say? Some people are saying yes. Some people are saying no. Great question. The correct answer is no, 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 no. The lumpectomy, a lot of women choose to go the lumpectomy route as opposed to the mastectomy because the lumpectomy is only going to remove the tumor, but it will preserve the surrounding tissues and most of the breast and um, typically the nipple area as well. And so 
this is something that a woman may opt out for. Now, only thing is, is that depending on the type of breast cancer that a woman has, what could happen? Okay, what could happen? You have a recurrence where the tumor can come back. And so some women knowing that they have a history of, or their maybe their mothers or their grandmothers have had a history of aggressive breast cancer, they say, let's just take away the entire, the entire breast. Okay. So our nursing considerations, let's look at the surgical process. So pre-operation to inter-operation and then post-operation. So pre-operation, what are we concerned about? We are going to be concerned about the correct surgical site. That is the most important thing. Okay. Marking the site in the side. Okay. Infection prophylaxis. And that is administration of antibiotics before the procedure. Blood clot prophylaxis. And that is helping the patient to avoid that complication that they don't need to have. And so they're going to be using um, early ambulation, typically with any kind of surgery, even for those of you who are wanting to work in the surgical unit, whether your patient has had a knee replacement, hip replacement, uh, what mastectomy we're talking about today, they get them up early. They get them up early and often. Sometimes, well, no, same day, same day, right? You get up. Um, even women who have had cesarean infections, you don't get to stay in bed all day. You have to get up, and that is to help so that you do not develop deep vein thrombosis. You don't develop those blood clots. Intraoperation, what are we talking about? We know that this is done under general anesthesia. And so in order for a patient to have anesthesia, in order for a patient to be um, anesthetized, we need to have some informed consent. We need to have an anesthesiologist consult. We're going to put the patient supine with their arms extended. Yes. And if we're doing a lymph node biopsy, that is to be done before the mastectomy, okay? It is, it is very important that any type of diagnostic testing is done before the actual final procedure. A mastectomy is considered a terminal procedure. So it is the final, it is the last, it is the highest intervention that can be done. So we always want to investigate thoroughly before we would do such a procedure, okay? Because you can't reverse a mastectomy once you do it, all right? It's kind of like in, um, you know, if a person gets their leg amputated, that is the most, uh, that's the terminal, that's the most aggressive form, all right? So we need to make sure any biopsies have been done prior to the mastectomy. All right, also drains, making sure that we are going to have some drains in place. And if there is drainage, we want a serous fluid from the breast. We want a serous fluid. Complications of the mastectomy can be a seroma, a wound infection. Okay. And these are terms I want you to look at. If you don't know them, write them down. Write them down and look them up. Skin flap necrosis. Nipple necrosis. Pain, of course. Okay. Phantom breast syndrome. Arm morbidity. And brachial plexopathy. Yes. Mm -hmm. The health teaching surrounding the mastectomy includes allowing the, the patient to understand that they are to use their arms, okay, the affected arm and the unaffected arm in a normal way. 
we we don't want the client to feel like they have to you know preserve the the range of motion or anything like that we want them to actively go about their daily life because that's going to help facilitate drainage so arm motion exercises there are some activities that do promote healing coughing and deep breathing exercises of course incentive spirometry use lymphedema prevention yes i see the comments here no blood draws on the effective side Absolutely. What else? What else do you guys know? Okay. Um, breast cancer adjunct therapy. So before the mastectomy or along with the mastectomy, some patients may still opt to do chemotherapy or radiation. And so they can do radiation, which is typically a local therapy. They are able to, you know, radiate a specific area or they can take chemotherapy, which is going to be ingested and it'll affect the entire system as well. The breast cancer surveillance follow-up screening for a mammogram. So you have no venopuncture on the affected side, no blood pressure. So good, good job, good job. Okay, guys, here are the NCLEX questions. I only have three today for you. And um, I want to see how you are taking in this information that we went over. So here is the first question. Okay. Number one, a nurse is providing preoperative education to a client scheduled for a mastectomy. Which statement by the client indicates a need for further teaching? Number one, I will continue to perform my regular arm exercises even after surgery. Two, I plan to stop wearing my compression garments once I'm discharged from the hospital. Three, I will avoid lifting heavy objects with the affected arm after surgery. Or four, I understand that I may experience changes in sensation in my chest area. So when we have the, the statement that needs further teaching on NCLEX, that means that the statement is wrong. So which statement here is wrong? Which statement is wrong? I think we're all on one accord today. I like that. Well, no, maybe we're not. Some people are saying two. Some people are saying three. So correct answer is number, it is number two. It is number two. Um, this is wrong. I plan to stop wearing my compression garments once I'm discharged from the hospital. Yes, you have to be careful when you're reading. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. Um, that's wrong because after a mastectomy, wearing compression garments is, is important to reduce the risk of lymphedema. Okay. And so those, um, those compression garments do have to be worn. They should be wearing them even after discharge, even after discharge. But you got to be careful because I put number um, three says, I will avoid lifting heavy objects with the affected arm after surgery. And if you read that too fast, you may read it as I will lift heavy objects. It's just how it is. Okay. You got to be careful. Question number two says this, mm, a nurse is caring for a client who is scheduled for a mastectomy due to breast cancer. Okay. Which intervention is the highest priority for the nurse to include in the client's preoperative care plan? Here we go. Okay. Number one, instructing the client about the importance of maintaining a balanced diet. Two, teaching the client relaxation techniques to manage preoperative anxiety and stress. Three, collaborating with the healthcare team to ensure adequate pain management postoperatively. Or four, assessing the client's understanding of the surgical procedure. This is a good one. We're asking, what is the highest priority? Okay. 
for the nurse to include in the client's preoperative care plan? Is it one, instructing the client about the importance of maintaining a balanced diet? Two, teaching the client relaxation techniques to manage preoperative anxiety and stress. Three, collaborating with the healthcare team to ensure adequate pain management postoperatively. Or four, assessing the client's understanding of the surgical procedure. It's between two and four. It's definitely between two and four. Which one? What do you say? So if I say between two and four, mm, a lot of people are saying it's definitely four, but some people are saying no, it's two, two. Correct answer is absolutely four, four, four. Because, because before a patient goes into surgery or a procedure, the highest priority is that they, they have some understanding, they are aware of what is happening or what is going to happen. And then this means if they understand, then this means that their informed consent is legally done correctly. It means that they're able to actually give an informed consent. And that's a high priority. That's a high priority. Okay. Yes. Good job. Maribel says that client will sign a consent. So she needs to understand the surgical procedure. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Question number three is this. Mm. In a routine post-operative evaluation of a client who underwent a mastectomy, the nurse notices moderate serosanguous drainage on the surgical dressing. What should the nurse's what should be the nurse's primary action? Here we go. Number one, notify the healthcare provider immediately. Two, reinforce the dressing with additional gauze. Three, document the finding and continue to monitor. Or four, remove the dressing to inspect the surgical site. What do we do here? Uh, this is good fundamentals. This is the good fundamental nursing things. Okay. Okay. Correct answer is going to V number. I see some twos, threes, fours. Correct answer is number three. Document this finding. Continue to monitor it. It's normal. Yes. Moderate serosanguous drainage on the dressing is common. It's common finding, especially after the post-operative, okay, and following a mastectomy. So the nurse would just need to document it and continue to monitor it, okay? All right, okay. All right, guys, I just had three questions today. Literally, that's it. That's all I could do. I'm, I'm really, honestly, I'm really proud of you guys for joining this class. I'm really proud of myself for being able to come on here. Whatever, you know, I... I went on this, I went on a cruise for my birthday, which was so fun. Okay. So fun. But when I came back from the cruise, I was sick, which most, most people expect, right? Okay. You've been around 3000 people, but then I think it turned into something else. People are saying that there's this virus that's going around and it's not COVID. I, I got tested for COVID. I got tested for flu. I got tested for strep throat. Is none of those things. It's something else totally different than that. What is it? What is it, guys? Am I the only one? But it's it's been nine days. <laughs> it's been nine days. And I'm exhausted. And my kids are exhausted. We're all on antibiotics and steroids and all this stuff. Um, but God is good because, you know, there's, there's this, this huge week for us coming up. Many of you know it. Many of you know it. Oh wait, wait, let me let me let me do this too. Hold on. Um, this was my motivation, and I, I gotta I gotta give it to you guys. 
embracing the journey, embracing the journey. Because this is a huge week for me, huge week. I am I'm going to Asia, okay? I'm going to the Philippines in two days. And I know I have always, I know when we get on here, let me say this to my international nurses. When we get on here and we say, oh, you're going to pass NCLEX and you're going to come to the U.S. and you're going to get a job and it's going to be great. Let me tell y'all, even with all of this that's going around, I, I, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm so afraid. So any international nurse that is thinking of coming to here and you're leaving your home and you're leaving your culture and you're leaving your family for a dream. I'm, I feel you guys because I'm about to leave the United States and I am going to an entirely different content, kind of, uh, I can't even say it, continent, going to Asia, right? And I am taking my family. I'm taking my kids. And when we leave our home, we're going to be gone for about 30 days. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like in the Philippines. I'm excited for my class. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm excited for my class. I'm excited for the nurses that I'm going to meet in the Philippines. We're going to have a blast. Literally. I do. I hear the weather is beautiful. I'm going, you know, to meet some Remar nurses. I have the most amazing friends in the Philippines that I'm so excited to meet. But you know what? I'm nervous. I'm nervous about the food. My, I'm nervous about how my kids are going to, you know, respond. If, they'll, if they get sick, if we're not all the way healthy, what are the hospitals like over there? Um, you know? Yes, I'll still be doing winning Wednesdays and Monday I'm um Monday motivations and winning Wednesdays, but it'll be what 3 a.m. or 9 a.m. or something like that. All those things. So I'm really nervous. The the plane ride is 16 hours just for one leg of the plane. Right? So I am um, Feeling, you guys, I, I, we, we want Remar to be more than just the NCLEX review program. We want to understand like the people that we help. We want to, we want to be able to say, yes, we have been to the Philippines. Yes, we understand what it's like. Yes, we know it's scary to leave your country, right? And so I'm on that journey with you guys and I'm embracing it because I don't know what it's going to be like when I get over there. But I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. And I'm expecting y'all in the Philippines to hold us down. I'm bringing Shiloh. We're going, we're staying, uh, we're staying in Manila. And then we're going to Boracay Island. Um, and so that will be one stop. And then I'm going to be traveling to other places as well. Okay. I'm going to be traveling to other places as well. But I'm taking, I told you guys, I'm taking you with me. And I'm not making excuses. This is the year that, you know, I step out, Mark steps out. We all step out and try to do things that we we dreamed of. And coming to the Philippines was one of the things that we dreamed of doing. And we're going to do it. I'm going to we're going to be the first NCLEX review in the Philippines. Right. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. But what I'm trying to encourage you guys is whatever it is that you are dreaming big of doing. If it's scary, then I think it's the I think it's a big enough dream. If it's too easy and you're not afraid to do it, then it's not big enough. You need to dream bigger. Okay? You need to dream bigger because I am afraid. But then that, makes, that lets me know that, like, okay, it's God's strength that I do this. And I honestly think that, like, I'm sick and everything is, um, you know, just, it, you know, you know, sometimes the enemy will put things in your way to stop you from doing something that's really big. And so I just believe that um, I need to push past the struggles right now to get to where I need to be, which is in the Philippines. <laughs> it's in the Philippines. Um, and then, yes, and then I'll be going to my next stop and my next stop after that. But uh, Philippines is, is Wednesday. You guys will be doing Winning Wednesday with me. I don't know if I'll be in the airport. I don't know where I'll be. 
or what time I'll be at, but it'll be 9 p.m. Eastern time. Great. This is you're going to enjoy it there. Don't worry. My fellow Filipinos are very welcoming. I'm sure everyone's going to make sure you have everything you need. Have a safe flight. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that I have people waiting for me. I have people waiting for me in the Philippines. So it's very exciting. But I just wanted to encourage you guys. Somebody says pack some snacks. I know I'm I am. My children are very much American children. So like my son eats French fries every day, every day, like he's eating French fries. So I'm hoping that he can find something that he likes. He will eat white rice. He will eat white rice too. So I'm hoping that he can find something that he likes. Um, Shiloh will eat, she'll eat anything. Mark, Mark is excited to eat everything. Mark is coming for food. So I hope you guys have the food for him because he's coming for food. Um, but we're also, we have some, some of, um, team Remar coming as well. And they're coming for the class. My class is uh, Sunday. My class is actually Sunday of next week. And it is going to be for international. Um, this is, well, this is my first international class that I'm having in, in the year 2024. So I'm excited about it. There's going to be, um, if you come to it, let me see. If you come to it, there'll be people for jobs there. There'll be my products. Um, what else? I'm sorry, guys. I'm drawing a blank, but it's going to be a really great class. I think you can sign up for it. Um, oh, there it is. <laughs> Sunday, March 10th, SMX Center. You can sign up for it. Um, remarnurse.com forward slash Manila. Manila, Manila. Listen, there are French fries everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm going to be in the Mall of Asia. There's there's French fries. Oh, perfect. 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 perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, but yes, that's it. Please be prepared for traffic too. Oh my goodness. Okay. I will. I will. I'm going to take you guys with me. I'll be vlogging. Typically I don't really vlog my daily life, but when I'm in the Philippines, I'm going to be vlogging because I, I am so excited to see the culture. I'm so excited to see, um, the people, the nurses talk to them and just have them just show me how y'all live in over there. Like, I just want to know. So it, um, and I and just, and I want to encourage somebody who is going to do something big. Maybe you are going to travel to another country. Maybe you are going to, you know, step out and do something totally different from anybody in your family. So I just want to show you guys what that process is like for me. I'm bringing all of my, bringing my kids, you know, I thought about leaving them home, but it's like, no, they have to see this. My mom is actually coming too. And if you guys know my mom, this will be an adventure for her. And I think it's just what nurses do when we step out and do something, it impacts our family, especially our, our children, our parents. Um, but we get to show them something that they never, you know, would have experienced before. And that will be you guys too. When you pass your NCLEX, You'll be able to take your family places that you never dreamed of. You'll be able to, you know, do things and see new things. And so um, these adventures are a part of what life should be. You're, you know, we should always be trying to get to the next thing, the, the next thing. So this is going to be super fun. It's going to be super fun. The next time you guys hear from me, I'll be in probably South Korea because I think that's that's my first stop. Um on the way to the Philippines. So whatever time it'll be, we'll, we'll be together. Definitely we'll be together. And then we'll be going over cranial nerves on Wednesday. So I'm going to take my rest. I have to pack. I leave in two days. I have not packed anything, not for myself, not for my, the kids. I haven't done anything. Now you told me I got to go get snacks. So I'm going to go get snacks. Probably I don't even know. Sour Patch Kids. Do you have Sour Patch Kids over there? That's all I have a taste for. Um, and, and that's it. That's it, guys. Um, I'm going to take my rest. I will see you. Oh, wait, do I have a Remar nurse here? Hold on. I may have a Remar nurse here. Let's see. Maybe. I don't know if I can. Hi there. Can you hear me? Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm I'm failing to turn on like the video. I don't know why. I know. I see that it says that you're here only in um 
Um, I see that it says that you're here only in audio. I wish yeah. I could see you. Because hmm. I tried Facebook, but unfortunately, I forgot my password. So oh. I couldn't get in through Facebook. So I tried YouTube. It won't put me on camera. So <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. So, so okay. the next thing is this. What about where are you from? Where What's going on? What's call, where are you calling me from? Okay, I'm calling you from Indiana, please, but I'm originally from Zimbabwe, Southern Africa. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Did you just pass NCLEX recently? I did. So <laughs> um, a friend of mine who took it last, was it last year or 2022, told me about you. Okay. And then I graduated uh, December 16 from um, my PN. And then uh, my ATT somehow took forever to come. Mm -hmm. And then close to January, month end of January or early February, I got in your program. I just love the content. And I thought to myself, I'm going to take my exam mid March. Okay. But then something told me, just take it now. Just take a chance. You were ready. Because in my mind, I'm like, I, I think I'm confident with the content, you know? Okay. Yeah. And then I, I, I scheduled it for the 23rd of February. Uh -huh. It was my first attempt, and I passed it. 85 questions. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yep. How awesome is that that you didn't have to wait? You you were ready. You felt like you were ready and you went for it. Yes, I did. And um, I really love that you always emphasize on knowing content mm -hmm. because I always told myself um, I haven't done a lot of questions. I haven't done a lot of questions. Like mm -hmm. at school, we used ATI. Mm -hmm. So I tried to mm -hmm. use the test bank, but I would get so frustrated, you know, sure. and then I was like, Hmm, let me not do the questions. Let me just know the content because yes. it's not like these questions are going to come out. They are not going to repeat those questions in the exams. I will just have to know my content. And I did. Oh, my goodness. Yes. that, And I think that's the beauty of it, because actually, when you study it with just questions, it can mm -hmm. take longer to yes. feel like you have an understanding. Yes. And again, when you are done with the, like I used to take the CAT exams. And then when I looked at the percentile, I was so discouraged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, where is my percentile so low? You know? And um, mm -hmm. I also think because from where I'm from and trying to uh, interpret the percentile, it mm -hmm. was so hard. Sometimes it will be in the 90s. And then one time it was 6%. I was like, no, oh, no, no, no. Okay. This is my last day of doing this. I'm just going to concentrate on the content. And thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, well, I'm so glad that you were able to get through that content. I'm so glad you were able to find the program because I think sometimes it's just it's difficult to find Remar um, out okay. of all the different programs that are out there. So I'm so glad you were able to find the program and then do it. And now you have your license. That's really now cool. Now I have my license. Guess what else I have? I give up. What is it? The first shift. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. This is great. My it's first shift as a nurse is tomorrow. I'm starting tomorrow. What unit are you going to be on? Um, geriatrics, I, I'm going to stay at the same place where I've been. Uh -huh. I've been a CNA for like a year there. Okay. So I'm just going to stay there, but at a different unit. Because mm -hmm. I've been in memory care for the longest, but uh -huh. now I, I asked them if I could be like in the long-term care so mm -hmm. I can be exposed to so many things because I'm so ready and nervous at the same time. So... <laughs> Yes, you're going to be exposed to so many things. And you know yeah. what? As with you having your your um your your license now, you're gonna you're gonna shoot up so fast. You're gonna shoot up so fast. You're gonna be making more money, you're gonna have mm -hmm. more responsibility, but yes. it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. So congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. you so much. All right. I, I, you know, I wanted to come on here last week, but there was a lot going on. And today I'm I'm just, you know, 
doing running my errands and then mm-hmm. i remembered oh my god it's 12 o'clock let I'm me just here. get on there <laughs> and I share my it. story thank you so um, much for everything you do for us absolutely the pleasure is mine i hope you have a great day running the rest of your errands and you have an amazing nursing career and you always know where to find us yes thank you so much keep changing lives thank you thank you thank you okay bye bye guys that was so amazing i love that i love that and that's what um you know that's what this is all about this is all about being able to um, have a, a place where people can hear and be a part of success. You know what I mean? Hear and be a part of success. And I think that's what we have here in our community. And we're global. We're global. I do. I need some rest. I'm going to go rest. But I did get the note that it's hot in the Philippines, which is very different because right now in Ohio, it's cold. And so That's going to be another complicated thing. Am I packing winter clothes? Am I packing summer clothes? Because I'm leaving the Philippines, going to Tokyo. And it's winter in Tokyo. I'm leaving from the Philippines. It's going to be hot there. So many things. So many things. And then, you guys, you just got to pray. Keep your girl in prayer. This is going to be an interesting trip. I can't wait. I can't wait. And then after Tokyo, I'm going. I'm coming home. I'm coming to Africa. I'm coming to Africa. And like I told you guys, this year is the year where we step out on faith. Okay. We step out on faith. So whatever, whatever we said we wanted, you know, whatever we said we wanted to do, we're going to do it. We are going to do it together. Okay. So I will be, um, I will be in Kenya. That'll be my first, that'll be my first landing place. Okay, so when I tell you guys we are doing this thing together, we are doing it together. So I need y'all to hold me down, okay? Because I've definitely never been to Africa before and I'm a little bit nervous about that as well, all right? But I got my babies with me and we're just gonna come and we're gonna just, you know, we're gonna be meeting Remar nurses at Caribou, Kenya, yes. Okay, guys, I got to go. I got to go lay down or none of this stuff is going to happen. None of this stuff. If I don't pack and get my, that's the thing about it. I couldn't even get my vaccines because I was so sick. So I need to rest so I can get vaccinated. But um, I love you guys. And I will see you Wednesday from somewhere on this planet. All right. I can't be the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet if I'm not traveling the planet. And so now I'm going to do that. Um, Remar nurses are everywhere. So it's time for us to see how y'all living. Okay. So Philippines, y'all got next. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.